we shall rejoice and be glad in it, amen. How many are glad that they made it to Wednesday? Hump day, amen. The middle of the week. Couple of more days to go, amen. Just so grateful that God saw fit to wake us up another morning yes, yes. to give us our right mind, to give us our health and our yes. strength. So we're so awesome today. And we just want to let the Lord know that we love him. We love him more than anything. We love him more than eyes can see. We love him more than, more than anything. So we just come giving him glory. We just come giving him honor. We just come giving him praise. He let us make it in another day. Hallelujah. That's awesome and that's wonderful. So we just thank him and thank him and we praise him. As we go into worship, we ask y'all just to help us facebook family we welcome you we ask you just to send up your your likes send up your hearts amen your smiley faces just to let us know that you're out there we thank you lord and we praise you and we magnify your holy name have your way in this place yes, amen he said wherever two or three are gathered he will be in the midst yes. so we expected him to show up yes. we expected him to show out we expected him to have his way hallelujah thank you lord
That's why I praise you yes. and I lift you up. Lord, I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. We say good evening, everyone. It's indeed an honor and a privilege to be in the house of God with our hearts filled with praise. He has once again uh, been better to us than we deserve. Yeah. Amen. He's given us uh, what we needed and not what we deserve. We may not even get all our greeds, but we sure enough have all our needs. And I know you got your needs because when I look out there, amen, he's given us a reasonable portion of our health and our strength. So we honor the Lord today for a new year. Uh, happy New Year again to everyone. It's our first Wednesday night of the year 2021. So we thank God once again for all that he's doing. Uh, we just ask that in your prayer time, Amen. You pray for uh, our church family, first and foremost, all of those who sick of being healed by the blood of the Lamb, got caused, uh, lost two friends today. So we just ask God that you recover those families. Uh, it's never a good time to lose family or friends, and you're never prepared. As much as we know the Lord and love the Lord, and he loves us, death is one thing that you simply can't prepare for. So we're asking that you all would keep the Weaver family as well as the Jackson family uh, lifted in prayer, as well as those who contracted or being affected by this uh, corona, this COVID-19. Bless, keep those, and pray for our nation. Amen. Once again, we find ourselves right at the right at the feet of civil unrest. Amen. So we just ask that you all would uh, continue to keep those uh, lifted in prayer, those that are being affected on the front line, those that are trying to bring some type of normalcy to a very unusual situation. We just continue to bless all of those involved. Amen. So we say good evening to everyone in person, those that are viewing live stream. We honor the Lord today for your presence. And we don't take your viewership lightly or for granted. Thank you, amen, for all of the time that you spent with us. And we pray that this message is a blessing. We ask that you would do us one favor. If you would just reach down to the bottom of your page and press share to make sure that this word gets out to as many people as possible. We know now in the days in which we live, we need a word from the Lord. So we want to do our part in evangelizing and making sure that we spread the gospel as best that we can. And ain't we so glad for the new age technology? Man, you can spread the word. Amen. You don't have to go door to door. Door to door is still necessary. Well, not in this season, but in the coming seasons. Amen. We'll be able to get back to the old school way. But for right now, you have a way in which you can help spread the gospel. So let's take advantage of the technological advances that God has allowed us, and we thank him for what he is doing. Come on, let's go to God in prayer before we jump into this word, every head bowed, every eye closed. Thank you, O oh God, once again for your grace, your mercy, O oh God, your loving kindness, your, your faithfulness toward our spiritual development. God, you kept us once again last night. You allowed us to sleep and slumber, and you didn't allow the robbers to to get us, oh God. You didn't allow death to overtake us. So we thank you, God, that you woke us up this morning, closing our right mind, Lord God, with a mind to know that we cannot make it without you. So we thank you, God, that you've given us traveling grace. You've allowed us to go to work and make it safely back home and then make the trip over to the house of worship. We thank you, oh God, for those who pressed their way out tonight. We thank you for those that are watching via TV, via the phone. Lord God, some are at work, some are at home. When, Ever the case, God, we thank you that you've allowed us this opportunity to come together. Even though the vehicle is virtual, God, we're still together, one in spirit. So we thank you, Lord God, for this word that's been preserved and, and, and put together for our benefit. Now, God, remove all distractions and things that's not like you. Let us hone in and glean the word of God that's been prepared, that we'll receive it, that we'll eat it, that it will get into our bloodstream, and we will be able to imitate Christ better tomorrow than we did on yesterday. We thank you, God. We love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Sunday, uh, we started a series entitled Serve the Lord with Gladness. We said it's going to be our theme for the whole year. Serve the Lord with gladness. Because I want to keep reminding myself as I remind you all how blessed we are to be able to serve the Lord. And when you understand where we could have been, and where we should have been and where God has given us, where he's placed us, there ought to be joy 
when it comes to serving the Lord. So, so the service, servitude, servanthood is not a burden, it's a blessing. So we're going to look at the different ways, and we're going to jump in and out of specific servitude stories like tonight, amen, and we're going to just walk down through the scriptures, and uh, I'm going to do a little practical teaching tonight, amen, so you're going to need your Bible because we're going to walk down through John chapter 13 is where I want to call your attention, John chapter 13, I'm going to read 15 through 17 because that's the, that's the crux, the emphasis of what I want to discuss, but we're going to look at how it's set up and how Jesus shows us a very very powerful act of servitude. John chapter 13, New Testament. Amen. You should see some red in your Bible. John chapter 13. When you see red, you know it ain't just, it ain't just anybody talking right there. That's, that's, that's the master himself. Amen. John chapter 13 is filled with red. So we're looking at uh, John chapter 13 for the interest of time. We're going to look at 15 through 17 when you find uh, these verses. You'll find these words. I want to read it from the NIV version of the printed text. It says, I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Verily, truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you don't. Now, that you know these things, you will be blessed if you, if you do them. Just for tonight, we're going to talk from this topic. Amen. You might hear this one again. I like this one. It's, uh, the topic is like Christ. If I could be like, like Christ. I know you used to sing Mike, but it's Christ tonight. Like Christ. If I could be like, like Christ. Now, would you flank with your prayers and your amens? When you get to the, this particular point in the story of Jesus' ministry, He has now done all he can do for the public ministry. He has healed. He has delivered. He has opened up blind eyes. He has healed lepers. He has has given usage of the limbs back to the paralytics that he come across. He's, he'd healed the woman with the issue of the blood. He, he, he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. He'd already done all of the public ministry ministry that he was going to do. At this particular time in John chapter 13, Jesus is, according to some scholars, no less than 24 hours away from his appointed time. If you read the life of Jesus, you will, you will notice a very familiar phrase. Whenever people would try to get Jesus to do something that it wasn't time for, Jesus would tell him, my time has not yet come, because he understood what his purpose, his mission, and he wasn't going to allow outside influences to put him uh, in a position where he was putting the, quote unquote, the cart for the horse. So Jesus would always tell him, my time has not yet come. But by the time you get to John chapter 13, his verb has changed because now he's honing in on a select few. He's been teaching, he's been training, he's been loving, he's been trying to establish rapport and to show them these are the things that we must uh, uh, focus on if we are to be like Christ. I, I, like, I like how Jesus does it because Jesus wasn't just a talker. Jesus was a doer. He didn't just save things. He, he actually uh, put pen to paper. He put hand to plow. He, he was good at leading by example. And that's the first thing in this whole text that caught my attention was Jesus was good at leading by example. And one of the most powerful things in leadership is not delegation. As a leader, we don't just delegate what other people should do. We do it in an example to show them this is how it should be done. Come here. You remember when you first started your job, the people didn't throw you in a spot. They told you to shadow somebody. They gave you somebody, told you, look, I need you to watch him because you're going to be doing what he or she is doing. So you had to stand there and observe. And the person that had the experience did it to the point you felt comfortable enough. And then either day, a couple days later, they still didn't put you by yourself just yet. They allowed you to mimic and watch the person and learn and glean until you got comfortable. Then they gave you your own stall. They gave you your own shift. They gave you your own machine or whatever. But the key was they was trying to train you not by talking. That was classroom work. They was training you by hands-on. And that's what Jesus is doing here in John chapter 13. He, he's training hands-on. And I love it because he's gathered the disciples. The Bible says that, that they're now getting ready to observe uh, the Passover 
meal. It's Passover. Y'all know it in text that when it's Passover, uh, they had already the Saturday was going to kill Jesus. But they couldn't kill him on Passover because of the groundswell of people and how they felt about the Messiah. So they said, listen, we can't kill him during the worship. Oh, as soon as worship is over, we're going to get him. So Jesus, knowing his time, huh? I love Jesus because he already, you never catch him off guard because he always knew all things. I'm going to show you in the text. So the Bible says that they're, they're, they're at the feast. Look at chapter 1, verse 1, th um, chapter 13, I'm sorry, verse 1. It says, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Now listen, you can't see the cross in that statement, but the cross is all over that statement. Look at it. It says he's departing this world, going to the Father. He loved his own who were in the world, and he was going to love them until the end. That meant Jesus had all power and authority in his hand, but he understood that there was only one way he could do the Father's will. Y'all remember Satan tried to tempt him and entice him and give him an alternative route. Told him if he turned, remember he was fasting, and it, Lord, consecration, he was fasting, and he... He was hungry. Satan ran up on him and said, listen, I know you're hungry. If you're so hungry, go and turn them stones into bread. He tried to hit him in his humanity, but Jesus was so connected to his divinity that he understood, listen, you can't give me something that's already mine, Lord. Y'all better watch that enemy because he oftentimes tries to persuade you to take the shortcut to get what God is already going to give you. The problem is God wants to give it to you his way, and the enemy's always got another way, and his way is always shorter, and it's no pain, and it's a slick move, and sometimes we got to be careful, y'all, that we don't get caught up in always looking for the shortcut. So why? So Jesus is showing you the cross is evident in chapter 1, uh, chapter 13, verse 1. It says, depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Stay with me. Verse 2. It says, after supper, here it goes, after supper being ended, the devil had already put into the heart of Judas, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Er, hold on, stop. I got to show you something. Listen, the devil can only execute his plan inside of people who allow him to. Okay, watch. Because the Bible says that he had already put into the heart. The devil had all, that means he'd been working on Simon. And listen, here's the scary part, y'all. Simon was in every Bible study. Simon was in every, every class, every teaching course. He seen miracles. He walked with Jesus. He ate with Jesus. He witnessed the, thing, the same thing all the disciples witnessed. His issue was he had a desire that was conglomerate or congruent to that of the enemy. You know, it's dangerous. That's why you always got to check your motives. You always got to check your ego, check your pride at the door because the enemy is looking. And listen, he didn't pick somebody out there. He got right in Jesus' intimate circle. Got a hold of Judas. And listen, Judas had to agree because the enemy couldn't execute the plan if Judas didn't have the same desires as the enemy. Watch. So the Bible says, y'all see it? The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas. You my guy. I'm going to get him. And I'm going to get him through you. The question we're raising at this point in the teach: are you a candidate for the enemy to slide in and try to mess up what God has already, Lord have mercy. So, 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 so he uses Judas. He's led Judas. Look, Judas is even at the last supper. He's here with the fellows. He's got his seat at the table. And the Bible says his heart Never. We talked about it Sunday, y'all. I'm telling you, if you don't develop this servitude mindset, this understanding that I need the totality of Christ, so much is talked about of what Christ can do, what he can bless us with, how many blessings he can give us, how much increase. And listen, I would do you a disservice if I didn't teach you the totality of Christ. And part of being like Christ is you got to fall in love with serving. Watch, watch. So Judas, at some, some, I don't know when, at some point, Judas wasn't with what everybody else was with. So the enemy used him and made a secret path, a secret plan with Judas. Watch, verse 3, Jesus knowing, <laughs> I love Jesus, that the Father had given all things 
into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God. What that said, Jesus had no issue in who he was. And you know, it's power and authority when you know who you are, whose you are, and whose you is not. <laughs> I was going to say ain't, but that's bad grammar. Who you is not. So, so, so the power is in knowing that, listen, I know God's plan for my life. I understand God has given me an awesome opportunity. This is Jesus. Listen, he's given Jesus all things, and he has come to God and was going to God. So Jesus was like, listen, there's no other way I can get this done. Keep going. He says he, he, he rose up after supper. I told you if you want to be like Christ, we got to be like Christ. Listen, he rose up and laid aside his, his garment, Lord, at this critical moment. The evening before torture on the cross, Jesus finds himself serving. Not getting popularity points. Not uh, trying to do a bucket list. You know, tomorrow you're going to die. Lord have mercy. You wouldn't even go to sleep today. You would do everything you could. And serving would not be on the itinerary. But here Jesus is, knowing that I got to die. But I'm dying for a good cause. But my last hours on earth, I'm spent teaching those. I told you, he said, whom he loved, remember, to the end. Stay with me. So, so here Jesus is at this critical moment, the evening before the torture on the cross. Jesus doesn't think highly of himself. He thinks about his disciples. Come on, you're talking about selfless sacrifice. This is before he even got on the cross. Jesus is now in a position, and he's trying to teach a lesson. Here it is. You got to do some research to find this out. When they came in the room, they was arguing. Guess what they was arguing about? The disciples, the church folk, guess what they was arguing about? Who's the greatest? <laughs> they coming to eat with Jesus. Jesus is prepared a meal, and he's going to sit them down and give them last-minute instruction, and they out there complaining about who is the greatest. So they come in with a bad attitude, Lord. Enter into God's presence with something else on their mind. Talk to me, somebody. So, so, so they already don't have the right mentality. But Jesus is here, and he hears them. You know he hears them. Complaining, come on, he knew everything, y'all. He they complaining, bickering. Well, I can hear him now. Thomas talking crazy to Andrew. Andrew's mad at Matthew. Matthew done told Peter where he can go. Peter's looking at Judas like I already know what you about. There's issues in the room. Jesus said, in spite of all of that, I love y'all to the end. Truly, y'all, this is loving them to the end. Jesus is disciples is about to treat them bad. Come on, fast forward so you can see what they're really about. They're going to desert him. One going to betray him. And everybody else is going to disappear but John. When he needed him the most at the cross, needed him the most, everybody going to run. They're going to hide. They're going to disassociate themselves. They're going to say, uh-uh, I, I don't love him that much. They're about to treat him really bad. But yet here he is, knowing all of this. Still in the posture of a servant. Ooh, somebody say, pray for me, Lord. Watch verse 5. He poured water into a basin. Okay, he got up, took off his garment, he grabbed a towel, girded himself with an apron, and he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples. Now, let me give you a little Jewish history. Uh, in Jewish custom, whenever you showed up to somebody's house, the host supposed to be at the door and wash your feet. Because they didn't, they didn't wear Jordans and Louis slippers. They, they had sandals. No socks. And the travel would get rocks and dirt. Come on, y'all know how we do when we walk around barefooted. That's the equivalent of them showing up feet dirty. And when you show up to somebody's house and your feet is dirty, they didn't sit at tall Michelangelo tables. They had low center gravity tables and they would have to sit at the table and their feet would be out. So it was disrespectful to sit down at somebody's table with some dirty feet. Yet, it's 12 set of feet and ain't none of them been washed. Because they were so preoccupied 
with who's the greatest, that they boycotted and forgot the customs. The Bible says they sit down, Jesus. They eat after supper. Jesus don't wash these dirty feet the whole time he eat. Can you imagine eating with some? Okay. Uh, so Jesus is, is now getting ready to show them how much he loves them. Because the Bible says, according to Jewish law, <laughs> the relationship between a teacher and a, a disciple, a teacher had no right to demand that the disciple wash his feet. So as a teacher, you couldn't even demand that your disciples wash your feet. It was supposed to be customary hospitality for the host. They never say whose house it is, because I don't think they wanted to put them on. <laughs> so Jesus takes matters into his own hand. Now remember, Jesus is the teacher. So think about how outlandish it would have been had Jesus asked them to wash his feet. And now Jesus is flipping the script and he's washing. Come on, can't y'all see him sitting? Come on, go with me, go with me. So Jesus is washing feet. And he's um, he washing feet. By the time he gets to the last one, I think it was Peter. Because, you know, Peter was the one with the shoe-shaped mouth. He couldn't help himself. Peter always spoke without thinking, spoke out of turn. Peter was just, come on, some of y'all got some Peter in you. You just don't have no filter. It just comes up, it comes out. That's what we say, ain't it? And it comes up, it comes out. Pray for me, Pastor. Well, it's a lot of Peters in all of us. Some stuff that come up, come out. So Peter said, hey, hey, wait, you ain't you know, washing my feet. Man, you know what I'm saying? In other words, I'm just as, no, nah, I'm, I'm not worthy for you to wash my feet. And Jesus told him, if I don't wash your feet, you can't have no part in what I'm doing. <laughs> Peter said, well, you don't wash this my feet then. Hands, head, everything. You know, Peter went on in then. But the message Jesus was giving Peter was that my washing your feet is just symbolic to me cleansing you from your sin. And if you won't allow me to come into your life and cleanse you from the thing that makes you ineligible from being connected to me, then you run the risk of being disqualified for the very thing that you can have if you would simply allow me. And that's the problem with a lot of people. We want to allow Christ to come in and wash us of the things we need to get rid of. Instead, we'll call him Lord or we'll call him Savior. We'll call him Savior because we always want him to save us. Lord, I need you to save me from this. Lord, save. But we won't let him be Lord because he wants to be Lord over everything. And whenever he's Lord, you don't get to dictate where he comes and goes. So you have to release surrender in order for him to be, for him to be Lord. So, so the question... The question I had, I wrote it down because the answer was too long. Uh, why did the disciples, <laughs> did all these dirty feet at the table, question I had, just me, why didn't the disciples wash somebody's feet? It's got something to do with how they came in. Watch, watch the answer. Uh, any other disciples, tell me if y'all heard anybody like this, would have gladly washed Jesus' feet. No problem washing Jesus' feet. Jesus, you need your feet washed? Yes, but if they had have washed Jesus' feet, they would have had to make themselves available <laughs> to wash everybody's feet. And whenever they made themselves available after washing Jesus' feet to have to wash everybody else's feet, that would have been an intolerable admission of inferiority. So they decided, instead of me making y'all think y'all better than me, because if I get to washing feet, ain't no telling how y'all going to treat me after I get done with these feet. So I ain't going to even wash Jesus' feet, because I don't want to wash Peter's feet. I don't want to wash John's feet. I don't want to wash all of these other feet that come as a result of my obedience. And sometimes, y'all, what stops us from being obedient to God is not that we don't love God. It's that we're fearful what the others, what the others going to say? So the fact that they came in talking about greatest, that set the stage. Ain't no way. I'm getting ready to admit I'm the lowest one in the room. And if I wash some feet, then I'm admitting I'm the least. So Jesus said, listen, I see y'all problem. Y'all first problem is y'all in competition with each other. Jesus didn't say this, but I think he meant it. It's enough for me to go around. <laughs> you ain't got to jockey with your neighbors. 
It's enough for me to, to go around. So nobody's feet got washed by the disciples because the disciples were still arguing on who was the greatest. And in order for them to surrender and submit and humble themselves to wash Jesus' feet, that meant they would have to do everybody. And that's one thing that robs us of some of our blessings. It's fearful of what other people going to think. What other people go. You know how much we could get accomplished if we wouldn't have that little voice in our head of those people that's going to say something that's going to make us, that's going to uh, get us in the flesh or make us feel inferior, make us feel less than confident about what God has called us to do. God has called so many people to do so many things, have given so many gifts and expecting so many works from us, but we're stuck and we're paralyzed at the spot of other people's expectation. Jesus knew the actions. He knew actions would speak louder than words. I'm done. I'm done. So I told you, he, he took off his, took off his robe. <laughs> he got up from supper first. Look at how he breaks it down and he's sending a message that humility is the greatest asset for any disciple. Watch. He, he, he rises from supper, a place of rest and comfort. Come on, y'all. Get out of your sanctified mind. And you. Use your imagination. After you just got done eating, you don't even want to wash the dishes, <laughs> let alone some feet. <laughs> so he's resting and comfortable. They done ate good. You know, when they had, you know, drink and, and they chilling and you got the itis. Y'all know how we do after we eat? We get the dozing off. And I'm pretty sure a couple of the disciples was, was a little wobbly. And Jesus was like, yeah, I, I got to get up and be an example of what I want my people to become. He, he rose out of a place of, of rest and comfort. And it was symbolic to Jesus because that's the same thing he did when he rose from the throne in heaven, a place of rest and comfort, and came down 42 generations to get disrespected, laughed at, treated bad, simply because his love for us put him in a crucifiable position. Not only did he rise from supper, y'all, he laid aside his garments. That means he took off his covering. He became vulnerable. He laid aside his glory, y'all, taking off the heavenly covering, and he was, though he was fully God and he was fully man, there was limitations that came as a result of being fully man. That means he couldn't be everywhere at the same time. Oh, that mercy. That's why he said, I got to go. And I'm going to leave y'all the comforter. Listen, and now I can go home with all y'all at the, at the same time. So, 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 so part of his humanity was his uh, it was, lim was limited by his inability to be. So he laid off his garment, he took off his covering, he laid aside his glory, took off his heavenly covering. He took a towel, oh, like a good waitress, took a towel and girded himself, ready to work. Ready to work. That, remember, he dying tomorrow. And he's trying to leave an indelible imprint in his disciple, that in order to be like me, you can't be so selfish. Y'all came to the dinner trying to find out who got next. And Jesus is trying to send the message that if you want to be like me, being next means this. Oh, can you imagine how they left? Like, oh, okay. I thought I was going to oh. go here. You can have that one, P. I don't think I'm, I I'm going to do that. Because the moment you find out there's no glitz and glamour, but there are sweat and tears, then a lot of people took tail. He took off his towel, he girded himself, he was ready to work. That's what he did when he came to earth. He took on the form of a servant. The Bible says he took on the form of a servant. He lowered himself and came ready to work. Last but not least, I'm done. Then he poured water into a basin. That means he was ready. He's ready to clean. Yeah. I like it because Jesus could have got another disciple to do all of this. and could have just washed feet. But he meticulously, intentionally went through every meticulous step to show us that his humility was stronger than his superiority. And sometimes we need a lesson in humility. Sometimes we need to be reminded 
of what really being like Christ is. So I, I, I challenge you to go home. Read John chapter 13. Very humbling story about how Christ did what he expected others to do. The Bible says after he cleaned them, he poured, he poured his blood to clean us from guilt and the penalty of sin. Then he went back, and guess what he did? He sat back down at the table. That's what he did when he got to heaven. He sat back down at the right hand of the throne, throne of God. Work complete. That's why he said it is it's finished. It's a done deal. I've now done everything my father has asked me to do. And now all he's asking us to do, to be like Christ. And listen, if we're going to be like Christ, we got to be all the way like Christ. What did he say at the end? He says, I set this example. I do this for you. He said, and if you won't, put that last verse back up in front of me, D. I think it was 17. He said, if you won't, to do right, if you won't, here it is, now that you know these things, here it is, you will be blessed, not if you say them, not if you sing them, not if you preach them. Christ said, listen, I didn't call you, <laughs> I called you to be doers, not just hearers. We good at hearing. I heard you. Talk, doc. We and us hearing is going to become doing it. Christ is calling us, y'all, in this, in this year of serving him with gladness to understand in order to be like Christ, servitude has to be on our itinerary. Remember, servitude is an attitude. And if we want to be like Christ, we have to serve like Christ and trust and know that he will take care of us. Come on, bow your heads, close your eyes. Thank you, O oh God, once again for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for the word, God, that reminds us that in order for us to be like you, God, serving, serving uh, has to be a part of our repertoire. We thank you, God, for your selfless sacrifice. You are the perfect role model, God, and we thank you that you wasn't just a talker, but God, you was a doer of the word. So you taught by example. You spoke it, God, and then you performed it. So we thank you, God, that you modeled for us. And we ask that you would give us the strength, the patience to imitate you. And Lord God, that we would show the world that there is a reality in serving a God like ours. We thank you for every person that's here, those who are viewing live stream. God, we pray that this message has blessed someone's heart. Remind us, God, that humility is always the best policy. And help us, oh God, as we move forward to this servitude year, this reminder of how fortunate and blessed we are just to simply be connected to a God like you. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, y'all, real quick. Let's on our feet and make sure uh, we know we got all members here amen god bless you thank you all for pressing your way but if you're viewing live stream and you perhaps don't know jesus in the free part of your sin we want to offer you the opportunity come unto me he says all ye that are laden and heavy laden he said and learn of me he said i'll give you rest come and learn Learn how to serve. Learn how to have a servant's heart. And that's what Christ is calling for in these days. If that's you, come on. Put your name in the comment. Get in contact with us. Check out our website. Amen. We simply want to help you become all that God has called you to be. So if that's you tonight, amen. Make the, make the move. Make the decision. Trust God. He will take care of you.
prayer, praying, amen, for you if you had a prayer request. Sorry, I didn't mention it. Uh, we want you to know that you can continue to put them in the comment section. Uh, if you want to go to our website, amen, we have a place where you also can solicit prayers there. Uh, don't forget, continue to um, keep all of our sick and shut in lifted in prayer as we uh, continue to endure this season. Uh, those names are on the list in your daily devotion. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Call out those names and ask the Lord to give them what they stand in the need of. Also, don't forget uh, consecration. Uh, first 21 days of the month, we're observing our Daniel fast. Amen. Daily, daily prayer, uh, meditation, scripture reading is a part of it. Amen. We ask that you all will continue those that are engaging in the fast. We're praying for your strength, your endurance. Amen. As we consecrate ourselves and clean our temples for more instruction from God. Every Tuesday morning, there it is, 8 o'clock, prayer time. Call on in. Solicit your prayer requests. Hit the mute. Touch and agree with your brothers and sisters as we go before the Lord on behalf of everything said and unsaid on your behalf and everyone. We'll make note of that. And don't forget, every Sunday morning, we're here at 11 o'clock. Right here on Facebook Live, if you're unable to make it out to 3109 Thomas Lane, you can catch us right here in God's Real Christian Fellowship Facebook page at 11 a.m. <clears throat> Every Sunday morning at 10 and Wednesday at 6, we observe our intercessory prayer. Also, if you would like to partner with us, if you'd like to bless us, be a um, seed sower into our ministry, there's electronic ways in which you can be a blessing on the screen. We thank you in advance for those who continue to give and even in the pandemic, God has been kind and he's been faithful. So we thank God for all the gifts and the blessings and I know without a shadow of a doubt, he has blessed you as a result of your obedience. Amen. I'm a witness. I ain't telling you what I heard. Amen. I'm telling you what I know he will. Lord have mercy. He'll knock your socks off. I dare you to try him. Amen. My grandmother used to teach us, don't, don't try God. Amen. But don't don't test God. She used to tell us, you know, don't don't test God. Well, in Malachi three, he tells us, T I dare you, test me. He said, try me. This is God talking. He said, try me. Watch me open. So God wants to show you. Don't listen to what other people say. Try it for yourself. And I promise you, best thing that I ever did. So I thank God, Amen, for all the provisions that He's continuing to do. For us, and I'm pretty sure you are like. Don't forget all of our social media handles. We on Instagram, Facebook, got a YouTube uh, channel. So if you can't watch the uh, the program live, give it a few. Amen. It uploads to our YouTube channel. You can go back and check it out because Facebook don't let us hang on there too long. They get us out of there. But we have a YouTube channel. So if you don't get in there under the time frame, you can go over to God's Will Christian Fellowship YouTube channel and hit the share button, hit the subscribe button in YouTube. Subscribe. That means every time we have a program and it uploads, you'll get a, a thing to your phone to let you know you got a service you can watch. Amen. So take advantage of all of the social media outlets and all the social media things that God has blessed us with. We thank God for our squad. Amen. Behind the scenes, making it, getting it done. Amen. Our media team. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. They clean up messes and make us look a whole lot better. Amen. That we uh, deserve. Amen. So we thank God for their tireless efforts and their um, continuance in helping bring you, amen, bring me. I can go home and critique myself as a result of this social media age. So I thank God for all that he's doing. Amen. Don't forget, y'all. Don't forget. Uh, please keep our um, nation in prayer. Amen. Amen. Send a big shout out and a hug and a kiss our brothers down in Georgia. Welcome to Atlanta. Okay. Our brothers down in Georgia, they, they, they made us proud. So we thank God for you, Georgia. If you're looking in Atlanta, down in Georgia, man, we love y'all. Thank you. Amen. So just continue to keep them. Amen. We know it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a walk in the park. Uh, but we maybe now will be able to get some things accomplished that will benefit uh, those whose skin has been kissed by nature's son. So just continue to keep uh, Brother Raphael Warnock, the first African-American senator, amen, from Georgia.
Keep that brother lifted in prayer. He's a man of God, so he's covered. Amen. But don't forget to storm heaven with the prayers because he could use more. So him and brother Asaf, amen, keep them uh, lifted in prayers. They got them last two Senate seats. So we thank God for all of the things that's going on and just um, continue to keep our nation lifted in prayer. Come on, let's go to God in prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we say our benediction. Father God, first we just say thank you. Lord, we thank you for this time in which you've allowed us to come together, God. We ask that you would bless each and every person that has viewed the live stream on tonight, each and every person that put in the comments, pray for me, Lord God, those who didn't audible, audibleize it or verbalize it, God, we ask that you would bless them as well. We know the Holy Spirit uh, groans for us, God, and it says things that we don't have the adequate vocabulary to say, so we stand in the gap right now. On behalf of our brothers and sisters, Father God, who are being healed by the blood of the Lamb, we ask that you would touch the families of the bereaved, those that have lost loved ones on this week, on today, as a result of this pandemic. Father God, we just asking that you would continue to touch each and every person, comfort them. God, we all grieve different, God. So we asking that you would comfort each and every one of us, God, as we move forward in doing what you've called us to do. Thank you for every pastor, God, is preaching and teaching your word in spite of these unusual circumstances. God, I thank you for men and women of God who are sold out for the gospel. Continue to give them strength, power, oh God, wisdom, knowledge, and understand that they may be able to continue to put the word out. Brothers and sisters may be strengthened and enlightened in spite of the locations. Father God, bless our nation. Well, we hold it up to you right now as we endure more civil unrest or so much anger and hatred and evil, God, is trying to run rampant over our nation. But we believe our strong God will prevail. Cover those. Keep peace in the midst of this chaotic situation. Father God, just continue to uh, put your arm of protection around those and hold them, God, in the hollow of your hand. Bless our president, God. Our sitting president who's going out, our president-elect who's coming in. God, continue to touch them all, condition their minds, oh God. Help them to understand, God, that the, the heart of the king is still in the hand of God. And we just asking, God, that you will continue to shape them and mold them and be patient with them, oh God, as they're um, dealing with so much pressure. Father God, we just asking that you will strengthen them and keep them. Thank you, Father God, for this time that you allowed us to come together. And as we Depart from this place, God, but never your presence. Bless us. Keep us safely till we all meet again. Give us traveling grace. We'll make it to our homes to find them the same way we left them. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done, what you're doing, and what you've yet to reveal in this place. God, we know that greater is coming, and we trust and believe you, O oh God, in your timing. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. God bless you, family. Have a blessed rest of the week.